we have big news to share with you from here at Pipedream. First is that we now support data stores within your Python code steps directly. Second is that Python code steps also now support connected accounts, just like Node.js code steps. This means you can generate scaffolding for any of the 800 plus apps that we have integrations for, and that number is counting. Last but not least, there are some really nice usability changes that have come to the Python code steps that I think are much more intuitive than the old importing from the Pipedream script helpers module. I don't know about you, but for me, the best way for me to learn a new concept is seeing a real world example. So let's go ahead and start. Here in America, it's getting close to football season, which means that the r slash NFL subreddit is exploding with activity every day regarding the preseason and the upcoming regular season. Now, for those who don't know, there are 32 teams within the NFL, and they're separated by subreddit from this main slash r NFL subreddit. So for example, we can open up the Cleveland Browns subreddit, and we can see all of these posts that have been made in the past few days, and they rank by upvotes and downvotes. Now, as the season goes on, I wanna see how each team's subreddit has changes in their positivity in posts. That's called sentiment analysis. When you look at a sentence or text, and you try to calculate how positive or negative the sentiment or the outlook is. So if we have a post that says, wow, team did great last Sunday, that would be a positive sentiment. Or, man, the Browns are being the Browns again, that is a negative sentiment. So I've gone ahead and made this Google spreadsheet where each sheet has a dedicated team, and these correspond with the NFL subreddits for each team. And then you can see on the columns here, I have the title, the link, the sentiment negative score, the neutral score, positive score, compound, number of comments, and when it was posted at. And then for each team, there should be a running total of all these numerical values and the averages of the numerical values. So our goal with this workflow is to detect when there's new subreddit posts made, funnel them to the correct spreadsheet, and then post or append new values here. And we're gonna do all this using Python and Pipedream. All right, so first things first, let's go back to Pipedream and create a brand new workflow. And then for the trigger, we're going to look for the Reddit trigger and use the normal Reddit app and look for new posts on a subreddit. We can use our Reddit account. I just have a test account here and we can pull, I'm just gonna say once a day or once an hour is fine just to start, once daily at 11 is fine. And for a subreddit, we just have to search here and look for our subreddit. So I'm gonna look for the Browns, which is the first subreddit in the list. We select the official subreddit of the Cleveland Browns. And then I'm going to set include subreddit details to true just so we get the most information about the subreddit. And I'll call this source uh, new posts on r slash browns, for example. Awesome. So we have a list of events here. Uh, let's try to pick one that has some sentiment it seems like to it. This one might have some positive sentiment, nailed two field goals. So that sounds semi-positive. And here is all the data re related to that particular post. Lots of data. Okay, so next step is to actually calculate the sentiment using Python. Now, luckily for us, there's a Python app. We can use run Python code to start the empty scaffolding. And here you could see that there's this empty scaffolding with the definition of a method called handler that's pass an argument called pipe dream. Now, luckily for us, under the code examples, we have a great code example pre-built for you that shows how to use sentiment analysis with NLTK. For the sake of the timing, I'm just gonna go ahead and click the replace button to inject this code into my Python code step. Now let's run through what this step actually does. First, it's importing the NLTK module. And then underneath that, there's a sentiment analysis module that contains this Vader tool. As we go look into the handler, this is where the Python code is actually executed when this step is 
its turn in the workflow's execution. So you can see that we download the lexicon for Vader so it understands what's going on, and then we pass it a sentence, Pipe Dream is awesome, and it calculates the scores and the sentiment of that sentence, and then exports those sentiments and the sentence itself as a result of this step. So let's just test this and just see the results. We should see the sentence, Pipe Dream is awesome, and we should see the scores associated with that sentiment analysis. So under the step exports, we can see that the sentence says Pipe Dream is awesome. And the sentiment says a number of categories, the negative score, the neutral score, the positive score, and a special compound score. Now, if you wanna learn more about these scores in particular, I definitely recommend you, you visit this link listed here. This tells you all about how the sentiment analysis works and gives you some other examples in the NLTK library to show you how you can make classifiers and do all sorts of really neat things with natural language processing. But for this example, we're not looking to analyze just pipe dream is awesome. We want to look at the subreddit latest post that this source captured. So let's pin this open just so we see all this data. And right here at the very top, we could see this is the title that we care about. We're going to copy the path to this data attribute. And then we're going to open our code once again. And instead of using pipe dream is awesome, we're going to use this path, PD steps trigger event data, and then the title from the event that triggered the workflow. So I'm going to set the sentence variable to this instead, and then just delete the old one. That should replace it. Let's test this just to make sure that we're passing the data appropriately, and we'll see what kind of sentiment comes back. So the sentence looks good. It's the same sentence from the subreddit post, and it's only slightly positive. The compound score is a little higher, but cool. So we're actually getting sentiment analysis from posts, and it took us just a few minutes. All right, now we want to log this information to our Google Sheet. Well, we could use the built-in Google Sheet action, but I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing in Python without having to worry about the whole OAuth handshake and all that cruft. We just use a Python step, Pipetream manages authentication for us, and we just use the access token. Let's see this in action. So we'll go to the Google Sheets app because that's where we'd like to make requests against is a Google Sheets API. And then we can see there's a brand new option called Run Python with any Google Sheets API. This is the same as the Node.js step called Use Google Sheets Any API, but instead of Node.js code scaffolding, instead we'll get Python scaffolding. So let's click on this. Now you can see a brand new Python code step was created, and we can just select a Google Sheet account from this dropdown, and that's all authentication is. No worrying about callback URLs or managing refresh tokens. Pipedream under the hood handles that for you. And then the access tokens available under the PD inputs area, under the PD inputs object. The name of the app is Google Sheets and the auth token is available under the auth property. In this example, we're just, we're just grabbing the user info of the currently logged in user, which should be my own account. So I'm just going to test this to show you how it works with the basic scaffolding, return some data, and you can see my email and my name and all that good stuff. So now that we have the scaffolding set up, we know we need to modify it slightly in order to make the request to Google Sheets to append a new row. To learn how to do that, we're going to reference the Google Sheets API directly. Now here's the reference documentation for learning how to append a value to a spreadsheet. And here we can see the HTTP request format and the parameters that this endpoint expects. Now, I'm just going to quickly um, split my screen here just so it's easier to follow along. Add this over on this side and then make sure I have my workflow open on the other. Now, the first things first is to actually define the URL. It's a post request and here is the syntax or the endpoint that is required. Now we're going to delete this and then paste in the URL. And we can see that currently requests is sending a get request, but this expects a post. So change this to post quickly. And then we can see it expects a spreadsheet ID and a range. 
The spreadsheet ID is the actual spreadsheet in the URL. So I'm actually gonna expand this a little bit more. In the URL of a Google Sheet, you'll see this long string of characters. This is the ID for the spreadsheet. So we can just copy that. It's not gonna change from request to request. We're just going to reuse that same spreadsheet ID over and over again. And don't forget in Python 3, just add this little F character in front of a string and it will automatically inject that value into the string wherever these special brackets are. Next, we need to define the range. The range is a special notation called A1 notation. And here we can define the range where the rows, here's a great example, where we can see the sheet name and then where Google, this request is allowed to place entries into. So for this, I care about the range being the name of the subreddit, right? So let's create a string that's dynamic and we'll call it the subreddit. And then from there, we, we just wanna be able to do anything in the sheet. So we'll give it full reign over the entire sheet, A through Z, the whole thing. How do we find the subreddit? Well, we can go back to our trigger. Let's create a subreddit variable really quick here. We'll go to the results, look at the data, and easy enough, the subreddit is right here. And we can use that to reference the name of the sheet and pipe the data into the correct sheet. So I'm gonna create the, reference the PD steps trigger all the way down to the subreddit. And this should give us the range that we are looking for. Now, the headers we don't wanna to touch because that includes the authorization to our Google Sheet, including the OAuth access token. But we do want to change the body of the request. So let's define the body. I'm actually moving to a separate variable just so it's easier for you guys to follow along. So create a brand new body dictionary. And here we can look at the Google Sheets API once again and look at the append section. Let's close this drawer. Ah, much easier to read. And look at the request body. It contains an inst instance of the value range. Looking at what the definition of a value range looks like, we can see that there's a range, a major dimension, and values. Now the values are the real meat and potatoes, if you will, of the request. We wanna make sure that we're sending a list, a multi-dimensional list of rows. The values correspond with rows in the spreadsheet. So let's just start there. That's the most common sense, easy to understand area. I'm gonna drag and drop my NFL spreadsheet over here. And we can see that the first row contains the post title. So this new row, we're only considering one new row at a time, I'm gonna create another empty list, and then I'm going to reference the post title, which should be available in our results. Now, um, for those who don't know, you can do Control-Shift-P or Command-Shift-P if you're on Mac, and you can pin a specific panel open, which is really nice for this kind of work, where I wanna go back, find the title, copy the path, and then go back down to my Google Sheets code, pin it, control shift P, and then we'll paste in the title. So that should add the title. Let's just go through all of these at once, just so it's quick and easy. The link is available under the permalink. So add that next. Now the negative, neutral, positive, and compound sentiment scores are available underneath the sentiment analysis step that we created earlier. I'm actually gonna rename this instead of just regular Python, we'll call it sentiment analysis, and then retest it so that the step exports are now under this new name, which is a little bit more descriptive than just the term Python. So now we can see the step sentiment analysis has updated to this brand new name, and we can reference these values. No, don't forget the command, command shift P to pin this open. So I'm gonna copy the negative path and then paste it. Is it negative first? Yes, it is. Negative, neutral, and positive. And I don't remember if the last one is abbreviated as well. It's not, so just the forward compound. 
And then finally, we're going to include the comments count and post it at from the original data, which created at is this one, and then the under num comments. So copy that, num comments, and finally the post it at time, which is a timestamp which we can convert in Google Sheets later. So now we've done the hard work of creating the values. We have to finish up the rest of the required fields, such as the dimensions. So we wanna add a new dimension as a row, right? So let's just set that to rows. And before we get too ahead of ourselves, I actually realize I made a mistake here. The argument, the keyword argument is not body, it's JSON. I've been doing a lot of Axios recently and my brain is 100% Axios. Gotta switch over to Python. Last but not least, we have to add a params argument and I'll call it params. Google Sheets expects um, a certain query parameter. So we'll just add that here as well. And we can find it by going back to our append. And you can see at the very top here, query parameters, value input option, this is required. We can open up this specific type and we expect raw or this input value unspecified, which is not, this shouldn't be used. So I'll set user entered so we get the fancy uh, data type prediction, that kind of thing. Value input option. And then set that equal to user entered. All right, I think that covers it. We added the rows, we added the authentication, and we added the parameters, which I think should be enough. And we also added the subreddit. So let's head on over to our spreadsheet over here, click test, and see if that worked. Major dimension is not defined. Oh, sorry, my Python skills. Once again, I've been doing a lot of Node recently, and in Node, you're not required to wrap the keys in parentheses. They're just interpreted as strings. The good news is it worked. So if we look over here at our spreadsheet, which I'll make a full screen now, we should see the values populated. So here's the post title. Here's the subreddit link to the actual post itself. Negative score, neutral score, positive compound and comments count in the time it was posted at. Awesome. So let's do this again, but this time let's go ahead and change the event so we can get different data. Um, let's try a different one. Let's try, let's see if this heart emoji is picked up. I kind of, I wonder if this uh, sentiment analysis is smart enough to pick up emojis. We'll test it. And then we'll test the end result as well. And ta-da, it added a brand new row corresponding with that link. And we can see the neutral score is one. I wasn't able to pick it up. But it changed our totals and our averages for this particular subreddit. Awesome. So now we have a basic way of tracking sentiment on the r slash brown subreddit. Now, all we have to do is just add additional triggers for each NFL team, 32 triggers total, and that will populate each of these spreadsheets in our Google Sheet. And I'll be sharing the results of this Google Sheet as the NFL season progresses on r slash NFL and possibly these other subreddits, maybe with a pipe dream workflow, maybe not, but it will be super neat to see this fluctuation of positivity and negativity as the season goes on and how individual teams perform or how the community perceives their teams are performing. This is just a small sample of what's possible with the brand new Python support in Pipedream. We can import data, we can export data, we can use any API that Pipedream supports. And if you don't see it, you can easily add it thanks to the built-in authentication scaffolding. As always, have a great day.